underlying hypothalamic circuits so, you know, that whole hierarchy has to be imagine how it's conditioned, that whole hierarchy of motor output part of it is conditioned by and then this is sort of like an output or an input system that Swanson didn't talk about it's sort of sensory that whole motor sensory, sensory motor hierarchy sensory motor perception action hierarchy, we'll say has to be constructed so that your basic motivational states stay satiated, right? because otherwise you get thirsty enough and you die or you get hungry enough and you die it's like you have to organize your behavior so that those basic motivations stay fulfilled so each of the little ovals that make up that hierarchy have to be organized and laid out with that set of limitations in mind but then of course there's a higher order limitation which is more the one that Piaget talked about which is that not only do you have to organize your internal hierarchies to take care of all of your basic motivations but you have to do that while everyone else is doing the same thing and so in some sense the hypothalamic system that's generating the impetus for these layers and layers of motor output also has to do so in a social context because otherwise you know you fight to the death over a stick of bread which seems like a very counterproductive thing to do so I, I'm trying to point out to you how many parameters those that hierarchical organization has to meet simultaneously also that one of the implications of that is that it's not an arbitrary system like, this is one of the problems I have with the r radical moral relativist stance it's like, wait a minute wait a minute for you to set up your perceptual and behavioral system it has to solve a whole bunch of problems like, and they're really complex problems and they're, and they're kind of arbitrary in some sense like, you get hungry and you need to eat, it's arbitrary so what that means is you can't fill that hierarchy with just any old thing you know, not only does it have to work to keep all the complex parts of you functioning here and now, but it has to keep them functioning here and now in a way that doesn't disturb them functioning tomorrow or the next day or the next week or the next month so that's integration across time spans, that's a killer right, because you can't just go out tonight and drink 40 ounces of vodka and then, you know, write the test on Thursday so, there's a probably not so, some of you might try so, but then you also have to organize your behavior in the here and now with your behavior spread across time frames in the presence of other people who are also organizing their behavior across time frames it's like once you put that many parameters on the organization of a personality you can see right away that it can hardly be arbitrary you know, it's tightly constrained ok, so here's some basic emotions we talked about basic motivations and so, the, the, what we're going to do in a simple way is we're going to divide them into two positive emotions and negative emotions ok, and that basically gives you extroversion and neuroticism so, positive emotions, they kind of fall into two classes the one class is the positive emotion you feel when you when you run a motivational frame to its limit so you're hungry, you go have a peanut butter sandwich and then you're no longer hungry ok, so what's the state how do you define the state after you've eaten your peanut butter sandwich and you're no longer hungry well, you know, you're not jumping up and down and cheering like someone who just made a touchdown, right, so it's, it's not that kind of enthusiastic positive emotion that you see when people are celebrating you know, it's more like satisfaction and, and that's actually technically what it's known as satiation and so, when a motivational routine runs successfully what happens is it eliminates its it eliminates the necessity for it to exist temporarily so basically what happens is you run a, a framework to its logical conclusion, poof, it disappears because it's done and you know, you might be satisfied about that but the, the next thing that happens is another motivational framework pops up and you're, you know, you're in the same game it's Sisyphus, fundamentally so, anyways it's satiation that is the term satiation is technically used to describe the state of being that's characteristic of the successful execution of a motivated frame it's also known as consumatory reward consummation, consume and that's associated with unconditioned that's an unconditioned response it, which means you don't have to learn it 
So it's, a, it's an unconditioned positive response. So, and that means that satiating stimuli, when delivered to a creature in the proper motivational frame, have the properties of unconditioned rewards. So you get three things there. You know, the satiation brings the motivated frame, motivated frame to an end. The satiation is also known as consumatory reward. Consumatory reward is very similar to what the behavior is described as unconditioned reward. Unlearned. So you can, you can stack each of those things to know on top of each other and then you've got them. The other kind of positive emotion is the positive emotion that you feel when it looks like you might get a consumatory reward. Right, right. Hope, curiosity, anticipation, excitement, enthusiasm. All of the positive emotions that we think of as really like happy, happy usually has to do with evidence that your pursuit of a valued consumatory reward is going well. Okay, now, that, so that's incentive reward, and the reason it's called incentive reward is because you're incentivized to move forward to the re reward. And the moving forward, the impulse to move forward towards a desired goal, that's what your positive emotion systems, the dopaminergic systems that are nestled, have the roots in the hypothalamus, that's what they motivate you to do. That's what positive emotion is, fundamentally. Positive emotion is, there's something good, I'm going to go get it. It's the I'm going to go get it part that's associated with excitement and positive emotion. It's what you feel, maybe you're an extrovert, you want to go to a party. And so, you're probably more excited about going to the party than you will be when you get there, you know. Because it's the, it's the apprehension of the reward that's with human beings, because we're such weird creatures. So often the apprehension of the consumatory reward is a more powerful emotion than the emotion that's actually felt as a consequence of gaining the reward itself. And that's partly, and this is where it gets a little more complicated, that's partly because we're so bloody exploratory. You know, so, there's things that you can learn about that are associated with the consumatory reward. Those are conditioned rewards. So an incentive reward and a conditioned reward are in the same category. Although, not all incentive rewards are learned. This is where the behaviors went wrong, because the behaviors thought there are consumatory rewards, those are unconditioned rewards, to get a conditioned, to con if you condition a stimulus to an unconditioned reward, you get a conditioned stimulus with a conditioned reward as a response. But the problem with that line of thinking is that there's actually incentive reward circuitry. It's not just secondary learning. It's like incentive rewards have been around so long, so those are things that indicate that a consumatory reward is coming. They've been around so long that your brain has developed its own circuit for that. And that's the one that produces positive emotion. And so, that's also produced, by the way, if you, when you're taking a drug of some sort that you really like. That's because it's activating this dopaminergic incentive reward system. If you take a drug that activates consumatory reward, you just like lay in front of the fire like a sleeping dog. You know, it's, it's not exciting. It's cocaine, amphetamines, alcohol for lots of people. Nail the incentive reward system, and that's the dopaminergic exploratory system that emerges out of the hypothalamus. And it's also the thing that learns what to associate with consumatory rewards. So I know that's a lot to take in, but... <laughs>